Hey everybody, Haku here with my uh, read through for uh, Mao Shoju Weeks A.K. Kaku or Ma Magical Girl Raising Project Restart Chapter 11, the final chapter, The Ones We Leave Behind. Now, uh, preparing for some sadness here, some depression. Uh, oh man, it, it feels weird restarting about to finish anyway. But a few things before I get into reading. First, I want to say what I'm planning to do next since we're about to finish uh, restart. Uh, this should be going up Wednesday. I'm recording it Tuesday. And because I have the hot Q&A to record tomorrow, I don't think I'm going to be able to record the second part tomorrow. So I'll probably record it Thursday or Friday. And whichever day I record it, I probably won't be able to have it posted until Saturday. So second part should be up Saturday for uh, you guys to prepare for. I uh, don't know where I'm going to split this in the middle because I was kind of trying to look without actually seeing any of the words or anything to see around the middle of the way of the chapter where there was any scene break and there didn't look like there were any near the middle. So uh, I guess I'm just going to read for around an hour and then stop. Um, and then once I finish this I'm going to go straight into episodes and the way I decided to do it is that I... I was trying to think, should I do one video a week every Wednesday doing two episodes? Or should I do one episode per video? That way the video could be titled after that episode. Um, and just do two videos a week. And I decided to do that instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a video on one episode Wednesday, on another episode Saturday. Um, and then just every Wednesday and Saturday I'll post a video reading through one episode. And I think there are like 15? I could be wrong. There might only be like 12 or there might be more than 15. Uh, so either way it should take us about like two months maybe. Uh, which isn't really bad to read that much. So uh, yeah, that's the way I decided to do it. That way you only have to wait three days between videos instead of a whole week. Uh, it just works out better for everyone I think. Um, and then after that I will do my video on my favorite restart. Or, I'll do it discussing every restart character from my least to most favorite, so it's kind of like a ranking video, but also me discussing the characters, uh, just like I did with Arc 1. And then after that we'll move into, I think the next one is limited. Uh, so yeah. And then uh, before I get into reading this, just because this is something fun, I know you guys say you like the discussion, I want to say some of my guesses for how this will end. Uh, of course, they're probably going to be way off. I've been way off a lot here. Uh, well, well, with Melville, it was more like I saw her as being the most obvious, and that's why I was constantly like, no, it can't be her. She's the most obvious. Please don't be her. Uh, not saying the writing was bad. I think the writing was very good. Um, but yeah, I was kind of hoping it wouldn't be her because th just the looking like Clamberry made it a bit too obvious for me. But things I think could happen here... Um, the most obvious to me is I would think one of the remaining three that we know of is the uh, Demon Lord. And then whichever of them it is, whether it's like maybe Mamori goes after Clantel, Clantel goes after Mamori. And no matter what, either way, Fle would side with Mamori, one of them would die. And then uh, some, or actually, I think Flood would side with Mamori, and neither would die because I think no matter which of the three remaining are left, none of those three were the murderer. Uh, Melville was the murderer, so they've obviously, even if they are the demon lord, they've tried not to kill people. So I think that uh, they might argue, they might seem like they're about to kill each other. Bam! Snow White comes in, saves the day. All three of them survive. Now. Will all three survive or is that just wishful thinking by me? It's probably just wishful thinking by me wanting all three to survive. Uh, if any die, though, I feel like Clan Tail's the most likely, sadly. Um, I could see maybe Mamori as well, but Clan Tail to me, sadly, most likely feeling, because I feel like Vlad and Mamori would still stay loyal to each other. Um, then, uh... Because I called early on, I, I thought they were going to betray each other, but now that we've got to the last chapter, I'm like, I'm so against that. I'm really against one of them betraying the other. Uh, another thing I could see happening, maybe, is I thought about it during the hot q and I realized it during the hot q and uh, Ripple's a child of Clanberry, of course a lot of people have said that. But other than Ripple being a child of Clanberry, I just remembered she had the Cloak of Invisibility, too. She could have been here the whole time, just all invisibled up. Uh, so that's a possibility. Um, or one thing I thought of just before recording this, now this is a bit of a stretch, 
But uh, Noko-chan could have just cut her hand off and left it there with the uh, phone to kind of go off the grid. And I mean, we know that if you d die in the game, you die in real life. But I don't know if you get injured in the game if it injures you in real life. So she might think, you know, I could lose a hand in the game. It wouldn't really affect me in real life. And if that's the difference between winning or losing the game, then it's not even really much of a sacrifice. So uh, I could see that as well. So uh, that's probably the least likely of uh, all of my guesses, but I'm going to throw it in there. So uh, yeah, I guess that's all, about all I've got for the guesses. Let me grab some water and uh, then I will start reading. Oh man, I'm just so excited for this and slightly nervous, slightly nervous for this as well. Uh, chapter 11, The Ones We Leave Behind, Shadow Gale. Currently, Shadow Gale and Fla were moving towards the Demon Lord's castle shop. There they stopped. Shadow Gale modified her stun gun and scissors with a wrench. Fla was watching her on top of the carpet. Shadow Gale thought that Fla didn't really understand what Shadow Gale was doing. It was impossible to understand the principle of how Shadow Gale remodeled the machinery using her magical skill. Flo was only pretending to watch Shadow Gale work, but was probably thinking of something else. I love to as well how um how uh, Shadow Gale, when she repairs stuff, she actually isn't doing any real work or any um, anything physical. She's just sort of um, moving her tools like she's working and stuff is just magically happening. I think that's funny as well that she doesn't actually have any idea what she's doing. She's just <laughs> she's basically just hitting stuff with her wrench and it's becoming magic. Um, so, continuing on. Shadow Gale had received a text from Fle. It was soon after Shadow Gale had discovered Noko-chan. Meet me at the Demon Lord's castle. Hurry. Don't contact me until you get there. The text was concise. Whenever Fle sends concise messages, it usually means that it's urgent. Shadow Gale recovered Noko-chan's magical phone, forcing her to leave behind the burnt remains of what was only a single hand. Of which there was only a single hand. Eventually, she stopped wondering why Noko-chan had left them. And only the thought, er, and only the thoughts of not being able to protect her remained. Shadow Gale moved her heavy feet with full power until she finally arrived at the Demon Lord's castle and joined up with Fle, who came soon. She said what was stuck in her throat. Noko-chan is dead. She reported. She reported. Really? Asked Fle on her magic carpet. There's no mistaking it, said Shadow Gale, maintaining her psyche. I see, replied Fle, having no opinion. <laughs> Boy, just no opinion. No chance of that. Oh well. Uh, when they finally reached the terrace of the Demon Lord's castle, Fle finally revealed what she's seen to Shadow Gale. Fle had been chasing Clan Tail's team, following the traces of battle, reaching beyond the collapsed buildings and destroyed craters, finally finding a huge open hole, and soon Clan Tail emerged from that hole, while Fle was hidden behind the buildings looking at Clan Tail's state. She came out of the hole. Her lower body was that of a gecko, the same one she had, or the same one she had when she fought the great dragon. On her right arm was Pechka, on her left was Lazaline, and apparently a head on her waist. A dreadful appearance. Apparently, her whole body was dripping wet down to the ground as she walked. I only saw her from a distance. It doesn't look like Pechka or Lazaline were alive. They were wounded, and it didn't seem like they were being treated. Okay. Also, about the head, I couldn't see the face from where I was, but from the hair color and hairstyle, and from what I think happened, that can't be anyone other than Melville. Fla concluded that basically, Clantail, Lazaline, and Pechka fought against Melville, and the only one that survived was Clantail. Clantail's lower half changed to a horse and walked towards the direction of the town. Fla was careful not to be found by her and hurried back to the Demon Lord's castle. I wonder if Clantail was heading to the streets of the wasteland town to bury the bodies. Well then, about our next move. Fle, who had finished revealing her information to Shadow Gale, took out her magical phone and pressed the help button. The wind from the terrace was blowing on Fle's hair. The edges of the magic carpet w were also being blown. It's not that something was wrong because of that, but Shadow Gale felt that something was wrong. What did you call me for, Pone? This game, its purpose is to collect and sanction the winners of Clanberry's previous tests, isn't it? Fall was silent for about two seconds. No, that's wrong, Poem, he continued. 
If we wanted to collect and sanction winners of Clanberry's previous tests, then there are faster and easier methods than just this game poem. We collected the winners of Clanberry's previous tests, and with this game, we wanted to see if they were truly qualified to continue as magical girls. Bone. Hmm, I see. Then what about Lazaline? Everyone's memories have been returned, but she didn't know anything about the, about a forest musician Clanberry. Huh, wait a minute. Is that true, Pwn? Val had no facial expression, or no facial expressions, so we couldn't physically express emo any emotions. Only his high voice was the hint. Lazaline, she didn't know anything about the forest musician Clanberry, Pwn? Val, is it possible that the master never verified who she was? Flo was the only one who was calm. Her hands were in her hair, twisting it with her fingers, bringing it in front of her eye patch, and being hit by the sun. Could she even see? You wanted to bring in the first Lazaline, but you brought in the current Lazaline instead, didn't you? Flo opened her fingers and released her hair, falling down in the position it was before. If someone were to know the participants by their faces, then surely they won't make a mistake. However, if they weren't in the same test and was an outsider and simply looked at the name documents, then clearly they could make a mistake, couldn't they? Shadow Gale was surprised. Lazaline, she wasn't a magical girl related to Clanberry at all? It was unknown information. It seems, well, I guess that, Sh that Lazaline was the second generation Lazaline and that she didn't know anything about Clanberry. If I was a victim myself, if I had lost family within the magical girls of my tests and gathered them up to tell them, you will all become victims like the demons you are, then there's that justification, or then there's that justification is rather hard to refute. I can understand if she was a magical girl like us, heartbroken after passing through a Clanberry test to become a magical girl. She wants to deny being directly involved, objectively speaking. She didn't do anything. However, if she mistakenly brought an innocent magical girl into this death game, what then? If that passes through, then there's no justice that can be argued in this game. Flat turned her palms up and looked towards Fall. Don't you think that's terrible? What did Lazaline do? She had no reason to participate in this game, right? So, there was no reason for her to be killed. Fall scattered more ribbons across the surroundings. Flat's speech was getting more intense. If there's no justice in this game, then what's the meaning of it all? Well, tell you, tell your master that. End this game and release us. Fall's movement stopped. The ribbons that were scattered faded away, disappearing. A new notice from the master pwn regarding Lapis Lazuline. She accepted that there had been an accident pwn. Well, at least she's honest. But Master also said that she can't stop the game now, Pwn. It's been set up so that the program will never end unless you clear the game, Pwn. I'm not convinced. Fleth spoke. Shadow Gale wasn't trying to follow her conversation. However, she was looking at Fleth, who was talking. <laughs> Again, Shadow Gale. No idea what I'm doing. I'm just watching Fleth. The whole point of the game has been lost. Stopping the game or not stopping the game isn't even something we should be deciding anymore. Val didn't answer. Fly continued. You're involving Lazaline, an innocent magical girl, yet due to the rules you say you can't stop the game, just like a bureaucrat. Even though we should stop, we're still being forced to participate in the game. Fla's words echoed in Shadow Gale's head. She wanted to hold her head and collapse. Fla was trying to make Lazaline into a bargaining chip. When Lazaline revealed that she didn't know anything about Clanberry, Fla should be aware of Lazaline's position within the game. What she explained to Fall now, what she explained to the master using Fall, perhaps she didn't expect Lazaline's death to be a loss. Even if Fla knew that, she didn't do anything. Something is swirling inside of Shadow Gale's chest, something dark, the result of several colors her sev mixing several colors together. She was clouded. Shadow Gale couldn't see through it. I demand it, Shadow Gale saw Fla's back. Due to her long hair, it was almost hidden. Her hair shakes with each gust of wind blowing out. She could only see her back slightly. It wasn't wide, but her spine was straight. She was a person who thinks she was in the right. End this game right now. Not even the master can end this game now, Pwn. If the Demon Lord is defeated, then the game will end, Pwn. Please defeat the Demon Lord as soon as possible. Flet turned off her magical phone. Fall disappeared. Shadow Girl's face was distorted. The words that entered her mind were terrifying. If the Demon Lord is defeated, then the game will end. 
Wait a minute. Don't you think that's a little weird? If the Demon Lord is defeated, then the game will end. The Demon Lord is one of the magical girls, and they've been messing with the game. They've been killing a lot of people. Melville's been beheaded. My lady, didn't we do it? Why isn't the game over? It really has been a long time since she snapped at Fle. Even if it's only a small snap, like a puppy, this was the first time since she's regained her memory that, that Shadow Gales argued against Fle. While she noticed the errors in Fle's words, Shadow Gale was also pleased that she could refute Fle with facts. Did Melville really do all those things? Is Melville really the Demon Lord? Melville is the Demon Lord. Or so I thought. So she is the Demon Lord. You're still saying that, aren't you, my lady? I believe that the only demon that only the Demon Lord would conduct such actions to other players. No one else but the Demon Lord would do those things. Melville was the biggest Demon Lord candidate, but she wasn't the Demon Lord. It se her, but she wasn't the Demon Lord. It seems. If she wasn't, if she was the Demon Lord, then the game would already be over. She wasn't the Demon Lord, just an ordinary player. But she also killed the other players. Why would she commit those actions? I can only speculate. But I think I understand her reasoning based on her outfit. In a way, she wanted the killings to happen. What? Once we decided that Melville was the Demon Lord, there was no other room for any more possibilities. Using her magic to camouflage, she wanted to kill Clantail, I believe. But then, why did Noko-chan get burnt? I can't explain that. Someone had silently burnt down Noko-chan and killed her. The weapon used to kill her was probably the weapon they got in the Demon Lord's castle to flame to her. Okay, that's finally coming into play. I didn't even think of that. There was no other weapon that can kill in such a way. What we should do next is prepare. Anyone can be the Demon Lord. And what would you do if you were killed before we were prepared? Then we'll have countermeasures. Fla activated her magical phone. From a doll's remains, a small girl resembling Rionetta appeared, probably Rionetta's real body. Do you remember a magical phone that rolled in the location where she died? If you looked inside of it, you'll see many items, a non-combatant assigned to manage items, probably Pechka's. Even if it's Rionetta's phone, it doesn't matter. I've grabbed the passes from the phone. While I traveled to the Demon Lord's castle, I also confirmed the pass amount. The only ones who have passes are me and you, Mamori. What about Clantail's pass? Passes are shared among party members, as they're used on a per-party basis. Either Rionetta or Pechka could manage it together. And Noko and Lazaline? I have them. What about Melville's pass? With the current distribution number, she would have zero. Since Melville's just ahead now, it's safe to assume her body was destroyed in the battle, and her magical phone should be destroyed as well. Fla called up the item field and showed it to Shadowgale. There it displayed the number of passes. 10,000 out of 10,000. It was an outrageous amount of numbers. The maximum amount was 10,000, and the amount that was distributed was also 10,000, meaning there's no more left to distribute. Fla smiled fairly unfaithfully. I bought it all, the passes. Once you use them, it'll be ineffective after a day. But if you don't use them, they'll never be exhausted. Now, no one other than us can move between areas. In order to buy that many passes, a huge amount of magical candies was required. That kind of amount shouldn't, couldn't be earned even if they seriously hunted monsters or cleared events. It was Shadowgale who was given the assignment of collecting candies. Among the candies that Shadowgale earned, only a small part was used to buy the passes, and the way she earned those candies was through repeated work. Of course, that was her grinding the uh, mid-boss dragon. Okay, let me grab some um, water. Interesting so far. I like Flo's plans. Still, I mean, I guess Clantail isn't the Demon Lord because she couldn't have burnt Noko-chan. So I guess there is another person out there somewhere. Um, okay. If they... F hold on. When Mass Wonder's Miracle Coin was stolen, they had heard that if the distributed event item is gone, the event will be reset. Fla paid attention to that rule. She sold the dragon shield that she'd gotten by defeating the great dragon, and defeated the revived great dragon. By repeating this event, they were able to raise their magical candies. If they fought fairly, one or two people couldn't possibly beat the great dragon, but a loophole-like strategy existed. Fla was probably aware of it before the dragon fight. During the dragon fight, Shadowgale noticed that Melville was attacking the dragon from beyond the red line. 
If she attacked the dragon from outside the red line, she could safely, one-sidedly, kill the dragon, right? However, Clantel's spear and Melville's harpoon, Daisy's beam, and the samurai magical girl Slash, Leslie's teleportation, neither Flower or Shadow Gale had any rage, range weapons or attack for attack. The death ray built into Fle's wheelchair had already been destroyed. Fle, who had ordered Shadow Gale to repeatedly purchase the R items, got her to remodel the toy bow and arrow, creating a large size injection device. What it shot was a dragon killing dagger. All she needed to do was hit it, and the great dragon would be defeated in one blow. If she somehow missed it, she can just dematerialize the device and put it back in her magical phone. Among the magical candies that Shadow Gale saved, Fle had spent some and purchased some more items. Rare items have lower appearance rates, but even the most common item, the map, had an upper limit to its distribution number. Once the map has reached its limit, it'll never appear as an R item. Getting all of the items in the R item list is a worthy way of using those magical candies. The R items that Fle got were basic daily necessities, none of them matched the glasses that she had received, but Fle looked at it another looked at another angle. Even daily items can be used as weapons with Shadow Gale's remodeling, just as how she turned the toy bow and arrow into an injection device. Fle took out the daily items from her magical phone and told Shadow Gale to remodel them. This is unreasonable. Unreasonable, but possible. We don't have much time left. But, we have all the time in the world, right? No one else can use the passes. No, we have exactly two days left. After that, there's the maintenance period event. Ah, Shadow Gale said out loud. During the maintenance period event, the surviving magical girls would be forcibly called, with or without the presence of passes, they had to face each other. The two of us are both non-combat magical girls. The Demon Lord is a combat magical girl. We won't be able to fight. We'll be killed. However, if we can prepare our equipment here, we have a, ch we have a winning chance. With how you work, Momori, I'm sure we can handle it. So first, finish up what you're doing. Shadow Gale worked on creating weapons for two straight days. It doesn't matter what was being used, Shadow Gale just moved according to Fle's instructions. Although she had no assistance and it was just her, she was being chased by time, and although this was easier compared to the time when she built the tank, she was being plagued by her customers' unreasonable orders. Yet, she was able to create several weapons. The base of the weapons were the stun guns. The monster picture book contains two bosses in the Demon Lord's castle, and it was able to stop both the knight and the robot. Even though there were no monsters with the evil attribute, for some reason the evil attribute enemies were weak to the stun gun and flamethrower which was sold here. I think the evil attribute must be the other magical girls, so things that are good against the evil attribute are probably good against other magical girls. Um, just because the person who made the game thinks that they're all evil children of Clanberry, so she would give them the evil attribute in the game. Uh, either way. The end of the end, we made it all the way to the Demon Lord's castle and all they sell are joke items. It's very hard to think of why. However, if you think more carefully, what are the kinds of opponents you would use stun guns on? That's right, it's an interpersonal weapon. If it's effective against enemies with the evil attribute, then the only enemies with the evil attribute is none other than a magical girl. Wow, I just said all that for no reason because the Fled just said it. Thanks, Fled. Okay. Fle considered such thoughts and suggested that Shadow Gale should remodel the stun guns and flamethrower. The stun gun was a self-defense weapon that neutralizes opponents while the flamethrower was a sneaky weapon good for launching surprise attacks. If either is used, the one that won't have any mental resistance would be the stun gun. Okay. That's correct. We've confirmed the distribution numbers. One flamethrower has already been sold. Since our enemy may not be as gentle as you, Mamori, you should keep that in mind. Eventually, part of the flamethrower was also being used. Fle gave her instructions. She received Fle's request. While she continued working, no unpleasant ideas came to mind. She was able to interact with Fle naturally. Since Shadow Gale was so immersed in her work, she probably had no time to think of anything else. The third... Er, hold on. Let me grab some water. Again, still confused. Nice seeing them prepare, but we still don't really have any answers here. The third day after the last login, the day of the logout event, the two of them in the Demon Lord's Castle Terrace waited quietly for that time. 
not just Pleb, but sh even Shadow Gale was on the magic carpet, not just sitting on it, but riding on it, standing on her knees, on a position where she's ready to jump off any time. Flo was sitting as usual. The two of them didn't move, there was no sound, just the occasional wind blowing past the Demon Lord's castle. As time passed by, the scissors and wrench on Shadow Gale's waist were shaking, making a rattling noise. Other than that, there was no sound, only a sense of tension. Their magical phones broke that tension. It was a ringtone. Their surroundings were darkened. From now on, an event will occur. All players will be transported to the wasteland town. The sweet, white-colored scent of the Demon Lord's castle became gray and earth-like colored, and furthermore, they were transported to the brown and khaki-colored town square. Their heads might hurt, but without any nausea, they casually moved, and suddenly, they were in a different place. The Wasteland Town Square was only a name. It was as lonely as it was deserted. No, it's different, sh thought Shadow Gale as she made a correction in her mind. In the first event, all the magical girls gathered together like this was a spectacular sight, is what she should have thought. The number of peoples decreased even during events. It was, or even during events, it was deserted. That was the correct thought. In the first event, there were 15 people. Now there was only three. Three people. Flash Shadow Gale and one more person. They looked around, a square surrounded by buildings. With fifteen people, it was cramped. With three people, it was wide. There was no shelter. The mermaid statue fountain was that was no longer functioning. Its fountain already dry. There is no water. It only deposited dirt and sand. Everywhere was the same as before. It will remain the same no matter how many times they come. They looked around once more. There was no one other than the three of them. They watched their detector at hand. They combined the thermometer they got from the R items with the map app's party member, party member current position function to create a super thermometer. About that name, it was due to Fled, who named it nonsensically. But its function wasn't nonsense. Observing an object's surface temperature and dis... It I'm assuming it observed an object's surface temperature and displayed it excellently on the screen. If they were totally wrong and Melville lived, no matter how outrageous that would be, they built this device. Oh, that's, ve that's very, very smart. According to the display on the super thermometer, there were only three magical girls in the square. There's no one else. Her voice sounded. No one responded. Flo looked around without hesitation. A magical phone was activated, a light shone, and a stereoscopic image appeared. Well then... This is a new event, but, like one of the last events, it will be a Miracle Coin event once more. Hold on a moment, Fleck called out. What is it, Pwn? I've heard it before, but can you confirm it? The maintenance events force teleportation. It's mandatory, and there's no way to avoid it, right? There's no way, Pwn. The maintenance events force teleportation is mandatory. Any magical girl who's alive in the game will be gathered in the square, Pwn. Even if they can't make it to the square in time, they'll be forcibly teleported, Pwn. Paul's face changed its direction by about 90 degrees and came back. Seems that he was looking around. By the way, what are you doing, Pwn? Shadow Gale was on a magical carpet. While Flynn and Shadow Gale were strengthening their weapons, they planned to trap the Demon Lord, who couldn't move anymore, in the square. And they considered that possibility. Explosives, electric shockers, all the traps can be, can be made by Shadow Gale. And as much as digging pits were involved, anyone could do it. Paul's question wasn't just about that, it was also about them arming themselves. Shadow Gale blamed the weapons. Oi, wait a minute. Why is this happening, Pwn? The Demon Lord's Castle stun gun, was it sold in the final stage so that magical girls could fight each other, Pwn? Setting it with the flamethrower, not even resisting to use it, isn't that a nasty idea, Pwn? Doing things like that is what the Master wants, Pwn. Outsiders should be quiet. Shadow Gale dropped the magical phone on the ground, stepping on it with her toes and turning it off. Paul's words rung in her chest. She was torn by suffering. She didn't want to hear such things. I want to ask you something. Flo went on. That's right. What Shadow Gale wanted to hear was something else. Are you the Demon Lord? Okay. She asked the magical girl standing across the fountain. Today she was a horse. Under the sunlight falling down the square, you could see her strong muscles and beautiful coat, even from a distance. Her upper body was a girl, holding a spear in her right hand and a shield on her left. Her horse tail was shaking and occasionally hitting her behind. No. 
Clantel's answer was short and concise, and also asked a short and concise question. What happened to Noko-chan? She's dead. What happened to Pechka, Lazaline, and Melville? Pechka and Lazaline were killed by Melville. Clantel was suddenly depressed. Melville is dead. Suddenly, she raised her face and glared at Fla. Fla was silent. Melville is dead, isn't she? That's quite a big deal. Clantel didn't respond. Fla continued in a casual tone. Paul told us, once the Demon Lord is dead, the game immediately ends. I also heard that. Shadow Gale was reminded of when Fla tried to use Lazaline as a bargaining chip. Shadow Gale's chest hurt with pain. She'd been working in the Demon Lord's castle for two days. She remembered what she had forgotten, a, forgotten in a long time. Melville is dead, so why isn't the game over? Clintail's irritated voice echoed. Fla was calm, but answered with a stern voice. It seems Melville wasn't the Demon Lord. Then which one of you is the Demon Lord? None of us are the Demon Lord, meaning you, Clantail, are the Demon Lord. With the fountain in between them, the shouting that happened over fifteen meters away was stopped. Clantail raised her hooves and stomped them to the ground. The momentum was so severe that the entire square could feel it. Yeah, but I feel like Flesh should be able to tell that there was no way of Clantail killing Noko-chan because Clantail was with fighting Melville at the time. Clantail, on the other hand, has reason to suspect them. Because uh, it seems like one of them is more likely to be the Demon Lord. Uh, well, they don't have an alibi for who... I mean, I guess they do have an alibi. If what we're being told is correct, neither of them killed Noko-chan either. Either way, moving along. I'm not the Demon Lord. <laughs> Hold on. <clears throat> I'm not the Demon Lord. Of course the Demon Lord would say that. <laughs> All the passes are sold out. Why can't I buy any of it? because we bought it all. It's troubling if the Demon Lord would come to our area, isn't it? How did you even get that many candies? Buying all of those passes would take 50,000 candies. The reason our candies are abundant is because of our legitimate in-game efforts. Is it because you're the Demon Lord? You don't even have a clue. Clantail jumped. Her horse, her horse's feet were folded, gaining power and, gain, gaining power and moving. Shaken off by her hooves, the head of the statue flew off. Shadow Gale blocked the vigorously flying head with her dragon shield. Clantail was already close at hand. Shadow Gale and Fled diffused from diffused to the left and right. Shadow Gale jumped sideways and swung her wrench. From the bottom, a shield pushed up her wrench and sent it flying. Binder, Shadow Gale's hand was numb. Somehow she managed to stop Clantail's follow-up hoof attack with her dragon shield. Even with the plus 12 shield, her body became unsteady. Fortunately, due to her shield, her hand didn't become numb. Fla thrusted her stun gun from behind, modifying the stun gun with a bamboo stick. Its reach is much longer than the original stun gun, making it better. That blow was difficult to avoid. Clantail successfully changed her lower body into a snake, making her tail whip like a whip and lashing Fla. Fla blocked it with her shield, though she couldn't completely stop the shock as she fell off her carpet and rolled on the ground. Just like Fless said, the difference between a combat magical girl and a non-combat magical girl is clearly visible. Even with two people fighting recklessly, Clantail was still strong. Flan Clantail's lower body deformed, tan and brown patterns, legs long enough to block the sun. A Did wasn't I calling Giraffe Clantail for like a long time saying I wanted to see that? Giraffe Clantail. Clantail thrusted her spear. Shadow Gale tried to stop it with her shield. Fear ran up her spine. Okay, the tip of Clantail's spear, with a length that reached the sky, reflecting, reflected the shining sun. Shadow Gale looked up. Ah, this is no good, said her intuition. Dropping the shield, Shadow Gale jumped sideways. Clantail swung her spear down. At the same time, the giraffe transformed into a tiger, adding to her attack power. One blow of her spear cut the ground deeply, causing an earthquake. It was supposed to be just a plus 7 weapon, but if Clantail swung it, Shadow Gale was sure her plus 12 shield couldn't block it. Their fighting difference was a wall, standing solemnly. Against Vle, who jumped on the carpet and chased her from behind, Clantail turned around and slashed horizontally. Vle lowered the height of her carpet, and she crawled down and avoided it. Part of her hair was cut off. Golden curly hair scattered around. Clantail showed her back to Shadow Gale for the first time. It was a wide and respectable back. She had a reliable back, and it was different from Fla's back. When Shadow Gale saw her back, something inside of her whispered, 
The demon lord's back is the kind of back that carried darkness, so why is her so dignified? Was Clantail really the demon lord? Shadowgill shook off those whispers and threw a net. It was a combination of the rope they got from the R items and the stun gun, an electromagnetic net that covers a wide range. If she could hit her from behind, even if it's Clantail, she'll find it difficult to avoid. Clantail was caught in the net. Soon after she struggled, an electric shock was transmitted through the net. The stun gun was able to knock out a magical girl in one blow. With her knee on the ground, her neck began to strain. This should be the end, thought Shadow Gale carelessly, as a stone spear thrust towards her. She thrusted the handle behind her without looking. Shadow Gale's right arm was grazed. Even if it wasn't a direct hit, the meat on her right arm was torn. She was bleeding, and her bones made a horrible sound. She screamed, holding down her right arm. Clantail turned around. Her eyes were burning with anger. A necklace on her chest shone brightly. One of the amulets sold at the shop, the stone amulet. Its effects were resistance to electric-based attacks. She understood why the electromagnetic net didn't work. If she looked at the item picture book, she'd know that the stun guns had been purchased in high quantity. Thus, Clantail prepared equipment to counter stun guns. Clantail had equipped the stone amulet. Faster than Clantail could swing her spear, Fla attacked from behind. Clantail guarded with her shield. They continued to attack each other, avoiding each other. Okay. The, w the whispers inside Shadow Gale's chest. She saw Clantail's eyes just now. It wasn't just anger. There was sorrow. It was the eyes of someone fighting because they knew they were the demon lord. Shadow Gale objected to the voices in her chest. There were only... Okay. It wasn't the eyes of someone fighting because they knew they were the demon lord. Okay, okay. That makes sense. I was going to say that doesn't make sense, but I just read it wrong. Okay. Shadow Gale objected to the voices in her chest. There were only three people left. Herself, Flang, Clantail, so the demon lord couldn't be anyone other than Clantail. While she was objecting to them, even the inside of her chest was clouded. There was doubt. Her suspicions weren't cleared. Clanberry's tests would never leave her head. If it's flesh, she could easily deceive Shadow Gale, tempting Shadow Gale, the two of them killing Clantail, then once she was of no use, she would take care of Shadow Gale, leaving only Fla in the end. Mamori! Fla was yelling at her. Fla was being pressed. Fla took out her flamethrower and attacked. Clantail blocked it with her shield. Or she would attack with her spear, skillfully avoiding a direct hit from the flames. Shadow Gale picked up the wrench and approached Clantail, and Clantail turned into a crocodile, waving her tail, warning her not to approach. We got some water. So yeah, mm -hmm. Mom I don't think Memory's right about Fleb. Fleb went through all that to save her in the test, so I don't know. Lo logically, though, that would make sense that Fleb's just playing Memory. Logically, of course. Uh, but ah, uh, but that I, I still don't believe it. I don't believe they're going to betray each other. Okay. However, the position of her upper body had fallen. Fla casually got off her carpet. Clientel's movement stopped for a moment. Up until now, Fla had never stood up before. She was either riding her wheelchair, riding her carpet, or piggybacking Shadow Gale, but Shadow Gale knew. Fla can walk and run normally. However, she tried to show as little of that to anyone as possible, so when the time comes, she could easily defeat her stunned enemies by suddenly running. Fla didn't miss the opening that Clantel gave. She kicked the ground, grappling with the shield. Clantel violently shook the shield left and right, trying to shake off Fla. Together with the shield, Fla was thrown, rotating in the air, landing with both her feet and hands in the ground. Clantel's forehead began to sweat. Her left hand was holding her own. Her left hand holding her own shield was trembling. Her ring and little finger were bent in the wrong direction, in which. In which case, and so, the shield dropped, though. Shadow Gale remembered the Clamberry test. At that, er, at that time, Fleff fought the same way. She didn't use her feet, full the weak, and if it comes to it, she'll stand up and attack. Her opponent couldn't react, and just like Clantail now, Fleff would attack them. That's right, Clamberry's test. It's the same as back then. Something black inside of Shadow Gale was swirling. It was hot, it was cloudy, and little by little, it was increasing. Was Clantail really the Demon Lord? Was Flair really not the Demon Lord? 
earlier. Flesh said that she and Shadow Gill weren't the Demon Lord. Then by process of elimination she declared Clan Tail to be the Demon Lord. Why did she decide that Shadow Gill wasn't the Demon Lord? Did she accidentally leak out the viewpoint that she knew Shadow Gale wasn't a Demon Lord? If Fla was the Demon Lord, then she knows that Shadow Gale couldn't be the Demon Lord. Fla burned the flames further, and Clantel transformed into a panther, quickly avoiding it. In the direction she avoided was the dragon shield that Shadow Gale dropped. Clantel quickly picked it up, bending her index finger, middle finger, and grasping it with her thumb. Okay, still carrying on there. This was also part of the strategy. Before the battle, Shadow Gale had thrown away her magical phone. By this, she had materialized all the items. They wouldn't return to her magical phone. The items are in a state ready to be stolen. A shield with a plus 12 modification was a worthy item to steal. Fla removed a remote control from the cuffs and pushed a button. From the inside of the dragon shield, flames exploded. Clantil screamed in a voice that wasn't her own. She threw away the shield in agony. Her lower body was transparent and huge, and had turned into a jellyfish, wrapping up the blazing upper body. Shadow Gale has heard that a jellyfish's body mostly contains moisture. She turned off the fires as, if, as it vaporized into steam, yet Clantel still had horrible burns. She was getting weaker and was groaning. It's a sight that Shadow Gale has seen over and over in Clanberry's test. Flez measures, her traps, her frauds, all well done, exposing a number of magical girls' corpses. Even in the game, she announced the death of Masked Wonder out in the open, and was also the head of the Great Dragon Extermination Group, all to see how the other magical girls would react, causing great confusion. Even if any victims resulted from it, Fled didn't regret anything. The one that told Shadow Gale and Noko-chan, run away... Okay, run away. Only Fla knew that. That was unnatural. She didn't know why she was dead. Is it possible that Fla killed her? Normally that's impossible, but this is Fla. Shadow Gale picked up the wrench with her left hand, kicking the ground powerfully. The dark burning steam was swirling around her chest in the same place. She had to do it. This was her only chance. As she ran, her momentum became faster. Her temperature rises. It kept increasing kept getting blacker. As Shadow Gale ran towards Fla, she swung her wrench towards her face. Fla, who was watching Clantel struggling, would never dream of being attacked from the side. Without even dodging or blocking, the wrench directly hit her. The response was enough, the sound of bones breaking. She felt it. Everything inside her chest had told her that Fla did it. Fla was blown away from the town square, landing all the way in the back alleys. Rolling over and over, her body dragging in the ground until she finally stopped. Shadow Gale looked at Fla. Her wrench was shaking. She had been staring at Fla until the moment she hit her face. If Fla was the Demon Lord, she would show some kind of reaction. Anger, becoming upset, an attempt to deceive her. She had to figure it out. Well, what kind of reaction is she going to have now? Shadow Gale won't be fooled anymore. Fla was lying face down. Her fingers were twitching. It twitched twice and then stopped again. This feeling inside of Shadow Gale, instead of a black torrent, it turned into euphoria. Why did she ever think of Clantail as the Demon Lord? What reasoning did Fla have to think that Shadow Gale would blindly trust her? Fla's behavior was suspicious, watching over people, or so it was said. It may have been convenient to leave Melville untouched. For the Demon Lord, it was a gift to have someone arbitrarily kill the others. Right? Shadow Gale looked at her left hand. The hand holding her wrench was trembling. She looked at Fla. She didn't even twitch. A chill passed through Shadow Gale's spine. It can't be. Did that attack? What was I doing? Did I hit Fla? Did I kill her? Why? Why did I do that? Mamori's name means protection, given so that she could protect her lady. She recalled her parents saying that. Her feet collapsed. She couldn't stand. She killed her. She killed her, but the game didn't end. The game still didn't end. Her feet had lost all force. The fallen Shadow Gale was supported from behind. Her collar was grabbed and she was lifted. Are you the Demon Lord? It was Clantail. She still had burn marks around her, but most of them have healed. The left arm that grabbed Shadow Gale didn't seem to have any injuries left. She must have used healing medicine. Are you? Shadow Gale wanted to deny it, but her voice wouldn't come out. She wasn't afraid of Clantail. She was afraid of herself. 
or she was afraid of herself, who blew away Fleb because of her doubts. And now we see um, Clantail holding up, uh, holding up Mamori. I really like this because I legitimately think I don't think Fle's dead, but I think that all three of them are seriously innocent. And the Demon Lord isn't one of these three. That's a really cool panel, though. Okay. Tears began streaming down. Clantel gripped her spear with her right hand. Lazeline and Petchka saved me. I am not dying here. I'm not dying here. So I'm sorry, but I have to kill you, is what she's saying. Clantel was going to kill Shadowgill. Flaz dead. Only Clantel and Shadowgill were left. The Demon Lord had to be Clantel. Shadowgill's wrench slipped out from Shadowgill's hand. She had no power left. She didn't like the feel of her wrench. She still felt the feeling of Fle's bones breaking. Everything inside Shadow Gale all faded away rapidly. I don't care what happens anymore. Now I get it. A familiar voice came out. Shadow Gale was hesitating. Clantail was also upset. She looked to the alley where Fle had fallen. The source of the voice had already awakened. I see. Now I understand what's happening. Such a terrifying magical skill. And... Oh, what if it's Noko-chan manipulating them to attack each other even though logically they're all three innocent? Fle began to stand up. Shadow Gill and Clandell both looked at her. Fle's nose was broken, her face painted in blood. Even among magical girls, her beauty was ruined. However, the light in her eyes wasn't lost. Was it the power of her eyes that was breathtaking? Clandell walked back halfway. When we were wondering who the Demon Lord was, I excluded the possibility of Mamori. I was confident, but I wasn't convinced. If Mamori was the Demon Lord, I still wouldn't mind. To me, if Mamori's the Demon Lord, then as long as things went favorable, favorably for Mamori, then I'm okay with that. Whether you're a normal player or, the, or a Demon Lord, Mamori, as long as you survive, I'm okay with that. If you were the Demon Lord, I would have helped you kill other players. Clantail let go of Shadow Gale. Shadow Gale landed with her butt on the ground, crying out with pain. Fly continued on. However, you see, something strange happened. Since when would I start to doubt you, Mamori? Why did I start thinking that I wouldn't mind if you were the Demon Lord, Mamori? It was a mystery to me. I was doubting you, Mamori. Until just before when you hit me, after you hit me, after I bounced, after I rolled, the suspicions within my heart began to disappear. So yeah, it is Noka Chen's power. She, is, she made them doubt each other, the feeling of doubt. Shadow Gale's hands were on the ground, and she retired further. She didn't understand what Fla was saying. She didn't get it, yet her tears wouldn't stop. Fla slowly stood up. Isn't it strange? While I had doubts about you, Mamori, you suddenly hit me and blew me away. If that happened, it usually wouldn't be strange if you were the Demon Lord, but afterward all my doubt about you disappeared. I saw clearly my mind was moving strangely. What caused this? As I looked up at the sky, I thought to myself, as my head was spinning, my doubts began to thin. That's right, the town square. As I moved farther from the square, my doubts began to fade. Flo was entering the town square from the back alleys. As I thought, my mind is getting cloudy again once I enter. My suspicions are increasing. I can't think straight. I don't care about the situation. I'm beginning to divert my eyes from what I originally thought. It's not just one or two people. It's everyone that comes in here, Mamori, er... Anyone, everyone who comes in here. Mamori, you need to believe Clantail. She isn't the Demon Lord. Shadow Gale heard the whispers in her chest again. Don't listen to her. She's a master of frauds. If you listen to her words, you'll lose. Mamori, don't think about any unnecessary things. From Fle's broken nose, her nosebleed continued to flow like a waterfall. Yet her voice still passed through. It passed through from the alleyways to the town square, piercing through Shadow Gale's chest. The whispers began to scatter, the black torrent disappearing. Both of you, over here, be careful. Fla stood in front of the fountain. She met with Clantel's face. Both of them nodded. Shadow Gale held her dragon shield near stun gun. Clantel transformed her lower body into a tiger. With the two of them surrounding it, she headed to the fountain. There's sand gathered here. Get rid of it all. Be careful for any attacks. For now, they obeyed. The three of them scooped up the sand in the fountain, and the inside was empty. Well, is there anything unnatural at all? 
the bottom of the fountain was exposed, and sure enough, there were some unnatural cracks about one meter in diameter. It was a circular crack. That crack there. Clantel raised both her front legs, and she stomped it down. Focused on the cracks, the bottom of the fountain tore open. Debris fell below. Er, debris fell. Below it, there was some space. Shadowgill looked into it carefully. Peeping into the space inside, inside was roughly a two meter square space, and inside, a girl with a maid outfit was trembling while holding her right wrist. Okay, so yes, Noko Chan was the demon lord all along. Man, that was good. Hold on, where are we at? We're at 50 minutes in, 24 out of 36. Uh, do I want to read the rest of this? It's 12 more pages, I don't. Okay, you know what? I'm going to call this one off here, but since there's only 12 pages left, I might record the second part today, and if, if I record the second part today, then I might post it Wednesday or Thursday. Like, even though I'm posting the first part Wednesday, I might post the second part Wednesday or Thursday, and uh, it'll be up, like, way quicker than Saturday. And next Wednesday, of course, is still when I plan to... Um, still when I plan to post the first video of episodes, but yes, it was Noka-chan. Um, can't believe that came to be right before recording that she could still be alive just without the hand, but, um, ah, I really, really like that. I like that they all fought and doubted each other, and Fleth's speech there, figuring it out, was amazing. Um, and also, I just love Shadow Gale so much. Man, this is such a good chapter, um, such a good story in general. Uh, but yeah, I'll finish reading it. I'll probably just take a break for right now and finish reading it later today, like I said. So uh, that is it. Thank you so much for um, thank you so much for watching. Just do the whole like, comment, subscribe, all of that here. And uh, the second part of this should be up shortly. It's just videos longer than an hour take really, really long to render and upload. So I'm uh, gonna cut this off at 50 some minutes. Thank you. Uh, so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Also, if you want a link to the Discord server, just ask in the comments. I'll give you a link there, but thank you so, so much. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and all that. Follow on Twitter as well. That's it. Thank you once again for watching. I'll see you all next time.